Hi there, it's Kate from the Your Courageous Life podcast, and I'm just doing a quick little message at the start of today's episode to let you know that I have got some new episodes coming for you, got a bunch of great summer content planned for the Your Courageous Life podcast. However, I am taking my own short little summer vacay, and so I will be releasing some new episodes in just a few weeks, but this one today is gonna be pulled from the archive. I think you'll like it though, because if you're human, At some point, you have struggled with some kind of self-defeating, critical thought or belief system. It might sound something like, who do you think you are? Why did you think you could do that? You're going to look really stupid. As the kids might say these days, you look cringe. I'm trying to keep up on the new generational slang since I have a daughter who is a preteen, but um, I don't always know if I'm using it correctly. Nonetheless, um, if you have ever had those limiting defeating critical thoughts or belief systems, today's episode is on silencing the inner critic. Now it is titled silencing the inner critic because that is what so many people think they need to do with the critic. But as you listen to this, you will find that I have found a different and ultimately more effective way of working with my clients that I I think just has leaps and bounds above just trying to silence the critic, which Honestly, if silencing the critic worked, you would never have an issue with an internalized criticism or belief system or, you know, whatever. So let's get into it today with this episode on silencing the inner critic or actually doing what is more effective. And like I said, have a couple new episodes that are in the works that'll be coming out shortly. And I'm looking forward to connecting again when I'm back from vacation. Here we go. Howdy, howdy, everybody. I was looking through the archives of the Your Courageous Life podcast, and I was shocked when I realized I have never done an episode, I don't think, I mean, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't think I've done an episode on the concept of silencing the inner critic. How is this possible? This is so central to things that that just, well, they're not my jam in self-help, so Let's get into this. Let's get into this concept of silencing the inner critic. So first, the inner critic is painfully misunderstood. There's a whole pathologizing of the critic as if it's like a cancer that has to be excised. The critic is not out to get you. And silencing the inner critic does not work. Hat tip to my incredible teacher, Coach, counselor, guru, man, that's my joke, Matthew. Matthew Marzell, who really helped me to reframe this belief. So he he was the first person to really help me to understand that the critic was not something I was supposed to get rid of, that it was not out to get me, and that silencing the critic does not work. And I was thinking about it later and I thought this is a metaphor that I think applies really well here. I think the inner critic is like one of those stray dogs, those really kind of tough, gritty, streetwise dogs that finally gets picked up by animal protection services. So the critic, or or maybe I'll back up a little bit and say that this is the the effect in essence, that the critic is this streetwise dog. Animal protection services would be you deciding, (laughs) I'm going to, I'm going to shift to this relationship. So that paints a bit of a picture of how (laughs) this is going to go for a minute. So let's first go to the streetwise dog, AKA the inner critic, the streetwise dog It's been kicked a few times. It's gone hungry a few days. And this dog, this dog has seen some hard stuff. It's been hurt. And it has responded to those hurts by becoming one lean, mean, snarling machine. But really, inside, the streetwise dog is this sweet, lovable puppy. It learned these defense mechanisms to protect itself from danger. So now that this streetwise dog, you know, when you first are working with the critic and you start going, okay, I'm going to give you some food for a streetwise dog, 
a hand holding a food dish that is extended towards that dog is a threat, and that dog is probably going to bite. Never mind the fact that, you know, in a real scenario with a streetwise dog, all the people at animal services want to do is, is to give this dog, this animal, the loving and nurturing that it, that it deserves. But at first, this dog is not going to trust anyone. It's going to trust only what has experienced previously. It's going to trust only what is it has experienced previously and all of its survival mechanisms from the past. The dog isn't bad. It just has a set way of responding to the world. Apply that to your life for just a moment here. When have you been more invested in your past experience and your survival mechanisms than risking the discomfort of change. And again, when you've done that, it doesn't mean that you're bad. Because this is where I think self-help goes into this binary where it's like, you know, life is lived beyond your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. If you're not out of your comfort zone, you're just being mediocre and average. And, you know, you like, ah, stop. It's like, You, me, all of us, we've all experienced hurts. And when we experience hurt, if we don't have a skill set for how to process that hurt and regain trust in ourselves so that we can regain trust in others, we are going to have a set way of responding to the world that is probably going to be full of survival mechanisms that aren't as helpful for us in the long term. And that's just part of what we're shifting around. So silencing the inner critic, silencing the inner critic doesn't work. Let's go back to this streetwise dog metaphor. Let's say animal protection services picks up one of these street white, streetwise dogs. If you put a muzzle on one of those streetwise dogs, sure, it's not going to bite until you take the muzzle off. Then you're really going to get it. In the short term, it works. In the long term, it doesn't. My interest is in helping people with what shifts things long term. If you want to stop a dog from biting, you need to rehabilitate it. You need to teach it a new way of being, not shut it down and hope for the best. I mean, think about it. Even though I get why anybody from an animal services type of situation would put a muzzle on a dog if especially if there's like an immediate danger to someone else it's not a long-term strategy and it's more likely to make the dog feel less trusting of people this is what's happening every single time you try to silence your inner critic it's less trusting of you next time if you want to start rehabilitating your critic, start by deciding that you won't silence it anymore. This won't mean you let it do whatever it wants. I'll get into that in a moment. But if you want to start rehabilitating your critic, decide you won't silence the critic anymore. Instead, decide you'll get present to the critic. Choose to see that the critic is not bad It's just a voice that has learned how to respond to life in a particular way based on what it has interpreted from past experience. And the critic just is. It just is. There's nobody around you. Think of anyone in your life. There's nobody around you right now walking around with no inner critic voice. There are probably some people who would say, I don't understand these self-help people, these inner critic voices and all that. It's just, you know, it's just so ridiculous. I don't have that. Oh, yes, they do. They've just cut themselves off from it or they're lying. And (laughs) they can do them. But it's part of all of us. And if you're on a journey to love and accept yourself, then let that journey start with just accepting the critics there. Okay. Then having the courage to believe that the critic can be managed and that this is a relationship that is one that can shift with time. Now, 
boundaries with the inner critic. Let's talk about that because sometimes people misunderstand me as saying that acceptance equals letting the critic say whatever it wants to you. Like if you're going to accept your critic, this means that your critic gets to be like, you're such a jerk. No, 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 no. I'm not saying let things run amok. I'm not saying let your critic say whatever it wants to you. I'm saying stop pretending that putting a muzzle on the problem is what fixes the problem. So back to the streetwise dog metaphor. That streetwise dog, once it's picked up by animal services or by a shelter, it will not be allowed to bite people or to harm other dogs. They will practice boundaries. But at the same time that animal services is going to practice boundaries through not letting that that streetwise dog bite other people or harm other dogs, animal services themselves, they won't hit the dog, starve the dog, hurt the dog as part of rehabilitation. The only thing that's going to help that dog that's so afraid and defended is loving boundaries. And you establish boundaries with the inner critic in the same way you would with another person. You start by going into each interaction knowing that the communication must be respectful. And this is where I really learned some tools with with Matthew, Matthew Marzell. It's as soon as your critic says something judgmental, or if they say something that's technically the words are right, but it's condescending, or if it's blaming, or if it's shaming, as soon as your critic says something to you that is not respectful, you respond with, I'm going to take a breath. We need to redo here. I'll listen to your concerns, but they must be voiced respectfully. Now, for a while, this practice will feel a bit crazy because you're going to be like, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> and that always feels a little a little bit nuts. And I would invite you to just notice you're talking to yourself anyway. It's just that you're, you, the, the primary vehicle until you start having some boundaries with your critic is your critic talking to you telling, that you, telling you that you're not enough or nobody cares what you think or that you're selfish or that you're wrong or that you suck or that what's the point or, you know, all these things. So literally, and I'm raising my hand here and telling you that when I first started doing this, I felt so stupid, but it is a powerful practice literally of a thought comes into my head that is, you can't do it, you're lame, whatever it would be. And I stop and I take a breath and I say to that voice, I dialogue with that voice, "Uh, you're going to have to redo that, redo, please. I will listen to everything you have to say, but you must speak respectfully to me. This is actually something I say to myself on the regular. At first, it feels ridiculous and then it feels normal. And then what you're really doing is reprogramming an old fear pattern to create a new courage habit. And it's the habit of noticing your inner critic voice and responding to it in a different way instead of avoiding it, which is the muzzle, silencing it, or getting abusive with it. You, in fearful, triggered, inner critic mode, by the way, you're not bad. And your critic is not bad. Your critic is the streetwise dog. It has seen so many painful things. It's doing whatever it can do to survive, including bite the hand that tries to feed it at first. And that's why the rehabilitation with boundaries is so needed. Your critic actually needs some boundaries. You can embrace this part of you and understand why it is what it is while not letting the critic bite. Start getting present to this side of you, the inner critic side of you, rather than trying not to see it, not to feel it not to hear it, not to recognize it. Stop trying to silence the inner critic. When you try to silence the inner critic and shut it down, you just put a muzzle on it and it trusts you less if you dare to take that muzzle off. It doesn't get you where you want to go long term, which is a sense of self-trust, a sense of self-respect, a sense of boundaries with the things that don't feel good in your life. 
that's how you'll start managing the inner critic voice in a way that keeps it from stopping you. And that's how you change your life. All right, that's today's podcast. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. You know you can continue the work and the fun if you want to. Head on over to yourcourageouslife.com forward slash begin and become a Your Courageous Life subscriber because as soon as you sign up, you get access to an entire library of worksheets and audios and other bonuses. And of course, you'll be receiving more courage in your inbox and who wouldn't love that? You can learn more about the Courageous Living Coach Certification at teamclcc.com. You can get the Courage Habit at your local bookseller, on Amazon, wherever you like. We can even connect on social media. I'm on Facebook at Your Courageous Life. So look for facebook.com forward slash Your Courageous Life. And I'm on Instagram as Kate Courageous. And I'd love to connect with you on Instagram. So here's to you using these courageous tools in your life and creating a real ripple effect of good. And again, thanks so much for listening. I love it that you're here.